Any future that will not require a change from you will not be different from the past. You should be more aligned with Yes, indeed, if there's a man to pray, there's a God to answer. Just wave to him. We thank you. We worship. Well, in the place of prayer at night, some nights ago, I was interceding for the territory. I got opened my eyes to see certain things, that's why I'm not shocked with the series of attacks here and there. Oh, bless God. Thank you, Father. There is an agenda on ground. Now, I gave a prophecy last month, our first meeting of the month of June, about the influx of cultism in tertiary institution. And I said the reason for that influx is because of the revival they've seen that is about to sprout up among young people in universities and campuses. Hallelujah. And so the best thing the devil decides to do is to bring into this school the intrusion of cultism. Now I am very sure currently about four schools are closed down because of cultism. I was watching one, I was weeping. They cut the guy's head and used it to do go post. In one of the schools, I think that, was, that should be Abia State University also. They cut the head completely and used it to do go post. And I gave a spe specific warning concerning FUT Mina. Now what I'm seeing is coming very, very close. That's why even me, I can't sleep. I can't. Now for those of us that um, are more of the, in the workforce, I had to summon a meeting on, um, I think on Wednesday. And I was telling them, I said, God says, son, you can't sleep. We are going on a 40-day stretch prayers and fasting every night starting from august 7th after the exams just to make sure we are not sleeping rise up to your feet tonight we'll pray please let's wake up we are gatekeepers we are supposed to watch our territory give me job chapter 3 verse 8 we are supposed to watch our territory we are supposed to watch our territory be very very sensitive the Bible says, let them curse it that cost the day. Who are ready to raise up their money? Who pray? Lord, every demonic agenda. Every demonic agenda. Every plot of the wicked consigning this territory, consigning this land. We are that now. Can you raise your voice in prayers? Shana mika do sele beha kabe soya dash. Sote de beleke shkale bala zome ke do boro shkale ya de dash. Shila bante rege bere de ke sala bato taya dia. Lebe rege do nama shale bala da skami ne ne shkale dish. Ila dain zala do pelen skabe la skane malaga dash. Shada da 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 God of my father, say, 
Shalala diate ada brana salye. Hey, ada brasho, ada brade, ada brade, ada brade. Hey, ama rosi, ada brade, ada brade. Fire nea, fire nea, shalala ada brala, brala, ada brala, ada brala. Shola ya kamante, ada brala ziate. In Jesus' name we pray. I speak as one that is learned in the things of the spirit and has been privileged to walk through certain pathways in the spirit. What I see is not good. We we'll pray and ask the Lord. Every agenda on this land, every agenda to suppress Christianity, that's what I see that's what i see it will come to a point it will be difficult to practice your faith it will come to a point it will be difficult to practice your faith who we'll pray finally and say lord going to the meeting for tonight every plot from the wicked to suppress christianity in this land on this campus will raise a voice tonight we pull it down. Every demonic plot. Give me some one to one. For thou, O God, are a shield for me. Feel my glory. Some one to one. Hey, for thou, God, for thou, O Lord. Out of shield for me, your glory, I'm a leader of my I'll lift up my eyes onto the hills from whence he cometh my help next verse. Shilaga laga pass. Please be very fast. Nebelege sopa lada tush kaba laga. I want to open a light for us there before going to the word. Please very fast, very fast. We don't have time. Who's on the projector, please? My help cometh from the Lord which, uh, which made heaven and earth next verse. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He will he that keepeth thee will not slumber. Never. Be 
behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slum, slumber nor sleep. Next verse. The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. Next verse. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I was a bit struggling with this scripture. Go back. Look at that. Was David talking about the sun being too harsh on his body? Okay, fine. If he was talking about the sun being too harsh on his body, then how would the moon be harsh on you? Oh, so I understand. He was talking about men projecting things into those heavenly bodies that it begins to work against men. So when you see somebody that cannot sleep at night, they say he has lunatic. It means he's affected by the moon. He's smitten by the moon. Say lunatic. His madness starts more at night. So what David was praying was, Lord, don't let the projection of the wicked into these heavenly bodies have an effect on me. Sometimes you, you find out during some particular time of the day, you just begin to have strange headache. Or some of us are here, you just, you just get confused. The sun is smiting you. The sun is smiting you. And the pain I have, the pain I have, with my little knowledge in the things of the spirit these men take use of alignment we had blood moon christians were sleeping and yet some people were waiting for 100 years to make sure the sun the moon and the earth stay on the same line such that you know what i did that night i woke up and i begin to reverse what was projected into this body before they close back alignment see it's not everything you shift easily that's why we struggle to pray too much. You pray, you find that there is one particular family issue. It is refusing to go. You have to be sensitive of times. I did a message on understanding times and seasons. The Bible says that when Jesus came to Jerusalem, he wept for them. For they didn't know the time of their visitation. Now we will take an advantage of mercy. And an advantage of the operations of the angelic adventure we can have your way through to God tonight and say Lord whatever has been projected into the moon and the star now let me tell you the truth this is what these guys do when you see them raising those enchantment I'm working out a, a message doing a deep research on it maybe during the break for those of us that will be on swear period so I'll have long time to teach them I won't rush the meeting we'll be talking about the northern kingdom I will tell you why they will remain richer than the church and why they will continue to stay in the citadel of power go and trace what through the bible you will see that god gave it to them because of one error at one point the bible says promotion come from where from the east from the west from the south did he call not <laughs> i'll tell you why it is difficult for a pre-christian to survive in the north we'll begin to play with it and understand the rhythms of the spirit I am angry when I see the massive failure of the student lift up your voice you want to pray for the people's academics now whatever he says I took it as a pain I say Lord you will kill me if I don't reverse what was done last semester I was mad I was angry this is not an issue of people we are not reading this was something that went wrong somewhere Are we saying everybody fail? No. But 9 over 100 is capital F. So we judge it on a percentage range. Lift up your voice. Lord, every projection that has been done. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay. Maybe when we get, get into the message, probably we'll talk about that. And for those that will be around during their sweat period, please be ready to walk. We will scatter certain things in certain departments. You will work it out yourself. One time, Dr. Paul Leneche, they prayed 100 days stretch on an anointing oil and took it and said, anointing the land of Abuja, everybody, on your own street. No, just go to wherever you can cover. And they broke that city open for Jesus. See the kind of church is sprouting there. We have a church of 75,000 capacity there. We have a church of um, 
85,000 capacity wonder city in Gila. There, the city opened by force for Jesus. Opened. That's the few I am mentioning. Mega church is rising. What is this one? We are dragging 100, 100 and we are still fighting each other in a land of four million, the largest land mass in Nigeria. You are fighting each other. You are foolish. Lift up your voice. But every projection that has been projected into the heavenly bodies to work against the academics of students in this campus, tonight we reverse. Tonight we reverse. Sadanda daya kubala das kamenesha zila la da pele gere gere gitu dah iya la sale balas pale la mana leban so sale gedosa pele gala gala gere gere sale la me apa bos sala di sala ga bala ga daya da bala ga das para ga de kaya dosa I speak prosperity to the academics of the Christians in this land, in this campus. I speak prosperity. I speak prosperity. I speak prosperity. I speak prosperity. Let the academies come back to life. I call for the outpour of the Spirit. I invoke the four winds of the earth to blow upon the academics of the Christians. I invoke the four winds of the earth. Pour out the soul, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Second, they will pray. The student in this campus is too poor. Sometimes I use it to mock them. I say the highest a GK light can spend is 15 era. Zobo and popcorn. <laughs> then they'll put straw. The highest you see a GK light spend in this campus. See, they've closed the old restaurant successfully. <laughs> they are poor. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, we decree everything that has hold wealth bound for the people of this land for christians for believers now listen hold on hold on hold on you might think i am being biased the bible says do good especially to the members of your own household all right so if you choose to allow the rain to fall on the wicked no problem but lord let there be a rain of financial overflow let students begin to play with scholarships. Let's play with scholarships. Lift up your voice and pray. She calabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalabalab
Thank you. In Jesus' name. Breathe upon your word. Sit down. Please quiet help me. He is upon us. He is the Holy Ghost. He is upon us. Custodian of the secrets of God. Oh, he is the power. He's the mighty right hand. He is the power. The custodian of the secrets of God. You the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. Custodian of the secrets of God, He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Ghost. Custodian of the secrets of God. Thank you. Somebody should just stay close. Let me go sit down. Sit down. Let me not stress you. Thank you, Father, for tonight. Rabboni, grant us access to the ancient secrets of old. Open up your word tonight. Anoint my leaves. Let your word come out with fire and power. Let your word not spare us tonight. Thank you. Thank you, God. For tonight you open our eyes to see what made fathers of old stand strong in God. What made them finish strong. Thank you, our Father. We give you praise, great King. In Jesus' name. Welcome the person by your side. Tell the person you are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Get your writing materials very quickly. The Asian Secrets to Spiritual Stability and Growth. Part 1. The Asian Secrets to spiritual stability and growth i need scripture please don't let this thing go off now i will play more with scriptures the ancient secrets to spiritual stability and growth give me revelations 3 and verse 1 to 2 revelations 3 holy ghost revelations 3 and verse 1 to 2 i'll read if you are there and unto the angel of the church inside is right this thing saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast the name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. I have not found thy works perfect before God. Tonight, my job here is to strengthen the things that remain. He said, I have judged the walk. I have checked the walk of believers in our days and generation. I have not found it perfect. Strengthen the things that remain. Why are we constantly experiencing the rise and fall? The Christian faith. Consistently experiencing backsliding here and there. You see a young believer started hot in God. After a month, after two months, the Christian work is already shaking. Why? The ancient secret to spiritual stability and growth. I came tonight as a counselor to counsel us to use my work with God as an experience to you. What has kept me going for 14 years with God? What has kept me this long? What has given me stability and constant growth in God? The ancient secret to spiritual growth and stability. The ancient secret. Give me Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. Very quickly. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12. If you are there, just open. Say, so wherefore, my beloved, as we have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, 
but now much more in my absence walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling verse 12 for it is God which walketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure verse 12 is my emphasis he said walk out your own salvation that means as a believer immediately you know God or you give your life to Christ you are expected to walk out your salvation with fear and trembling so the ancient of all understood these scriptures they know they had a part to play in working out their own salvation and it gave them stamina in God some of them died still believing and holding on to God what went wrong what went wrong I had to interrupt the teaching because by my call my job is to check disorder in an environment and address it God said talk about this talk about this we have so much of believer without spiritual stamina and statue any little pressure any little pressure they break any little temptation they fall why because they have failed to walk out your own salvation so tonight we're exploring christian disciplines as the ancient secret to spiritual stability and growth christian discipline that's what the saints of old knew they knew certain disciplines in the body of christ they must indulge themselves in to give character formation stability and stamina You don't grow unintentionally you plan to grow when a mother just gives gives birth to a child he begins to feel she begins to fix the child on baby friendly for some months right monitoring the growth knowing that this nutrient at this particular time we do something to the bones at a certain point in time they take him off that and begin to give him serilac at a certain point in time they take him off that and begin to give him little little food to food for the Yorubas, they give him something like um, this amala and a way do. Have I trained the child before? No, I stayed much with my mom. And after that, sometimes they begin to press beans you know, beans you press it and give to the child. Before you know what's happening, the child gets to a point the child cannot chew bone. That's how you grew. Christian discipline. So, when we have Christian doctrine. That is not adequately backed up with Christian discipline. It will yield no result. That's what's happening in the body of Christ. So much light, so much revelation, but it's not. It, it's not adequately backed up with the routine of daily Christian discipline. The routine, and I blame the church for it. A young man just gave his life to Christ. They are giving him a responsibility to handle. Why? Men are not giving responsibility in the church by zeal. They are giving according to ability. The Bible says to one in Matthew 25, he gave five to another, two to another one, according to their several stamina. It's abject wickedness. We don't allow people to take time to grow. We expose them easily to things that will make them fall. So when the pressures become heavy on them, they can no longer stand. No wonder the Bible says in Timothy, he said, do not give an office to a new convert or a novice. He said, lest he be puffed off with pride. He be puffed off with pride. Allow him to take time to grow. There are people I want sometimes. As if you touch any responsibility, I will slap you. Sit down and grow. You are sitting giving us some stories in the simple bible we read they don't even know that it's coming out from the bible they are thinking you are talking about a village in uk that's a believer that is handling a position and leading other people i was talking with somebody last week i almost slapped him at 100 level you have a spiritual son and daughter what level is your spiritual son you are stupid the rubbish is too much process 
this Christian race is a journey, not a destination. You take it one step at a time. Ah, I like one of my favorite quotes. I, I always give them. I said, if the, 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 the journey of life is like a ladder which you must climb step by step. If you fly on top of the ladder, three things are likely to happen. Is that how you break the ladder? That's why sometimes, let me be sincere with you. I stand under God as a minister of the gospel. There are things I call irrevocable mistakes in life. As much as we can encourage you as ministers, there are irrevocable mistakes in life. One time I went for a minister's conference. One of our father in the faith, almost 48 years in ministry, sat there. And he said, young man, let me encourage you. There are things we did now, we can't reverse it again. I said, really? I thought I preached this new creation reality thing very well. I didn't know. Sometimes we don't say things like this on the pulpit. So you don't get discouraged. We just give you hope to keep on. But there are things that are irrevocable if you make them. Two, is either the ladder is still there. You'll be the one that is damaged. So when you get repaired, you can continue your journey. The worst situation that can happen to you is when the two is no longer there. You are destroyed. The ladder is destroyed. Take time to grow. Take time to master the art of daily Christian discipline. We'll look at a few of them. In this series, we'll be touching eight of them. I found that this is the difference between me and the believers of my time. This is the difference between me and my young generation. People are in a hurry for premature manifestation. The Bible says, and the child John the Baptist was in the wilderness till the time of his showing forth. What God has not prepared you for, what God has not, what you have not developed a stamina to carry will destroy you, including the anointing. That's why for my sons that knows me very well. I stand under God till date. I have never laid hand on any of my son impacting Greece. <laughs> I know I don't do that. Jesus never healed any of his disciples. He was healing outsiders. He was expecting them to learn from his life. By just association, they contact what he carries. You need more of my stamina than the grace. If you do the things I am doing, you will get the grace I got. It's not for special people in the body of Christ. There were things we knew. And we made up our mind to follow them. To so run from unnecessary responsibility. Don't carry things you. Integrity is the ability to say, I can't do this thing when they are forcing it on you. It's integrity. Take time to grow. You know, aspect of your life you are still struggling in. You are carrying extra burdens. If I buy a Jeep for my five years old child, it's not an act of love, but an act of hatred. It will kill him. Master the art of daily Christian living we'll be looking into right now. Master the art. Make it a life. No wonder some of them will just, they will just give you one little responsibility to handle in the church. And your prayer life will totally destabilize. Totally destabilized. Because you have not grown. You are managing just a little responsibility. You don't have a prayer life. You don't have a study life again. Do later time you pray when you go to fellowship. Do later time the study is the Bible study of fellowship. No wonder. Most of the times when they drop down from that office, they fall flawlessly in the face of temptation. They didn't know they were enjoying the corporate grace. Nothing was there again personally. I'm telling you the secret of some of the stupid things we are seeing in the body of Christ now. That's why people no longer have regard for Christianity. You see somebody will say, if this one, they say it's the unofficial in his fellowship, a Muslim will say they should give him Pope. They say they should give him Pope. They can no longer trust our integrity. What will make deacons in working place be caught in bribe? Deacons will make them be caught in bribe. Number one, 
the restoration of Christian discipline. Number one. The discipline of prayer and fasting. The discipline of prayer and fasting. The discipline of prayer and fasting. One of the basic Christian discipline you must master that gave the sense of hope, ability and growth is the discipline of prayer and fasting. The Bible says in Luke chapter 18 verse 1, it said men ought always to pray and not to faint. So when you see a man fainting in the daily issues of life, something has been, uh, that has been tampered in his prayer life. The discipline of prayer and fasting. If you have not mastered the act of prayer and fasting, don't father anybody. Don't. What are you teaching them? Don't collect any responsibility. Don't. It's all scriptural. That's why we fall. Take time to grow. Have a solid prayer life. That's the secret of the ancients of old. They understood the discipline of prayer and fasting. See an average Muslim. He is trained to naturally pray seven times daily. It doesn't matter the stress of lectures. You will never see him complain one. Let a Christian stand. He said, I can't come to fellowship today. Kai, my back. Because it was not indoctrinated into you as a discipline for the Christian faith. You must develop a prayer habit, a prayer life. You must be a fasting machine, live a fasted life. These are the things that gives us stability, stability that develops our spiritual muscle. These are the things that heighten our spiritual temperature. I thought us one time the Bible says, He that test, let him come unto me, for out of his belly shall flow the rivers of life. The Bible says, He did speak he of the Spirit. So why when you pray, you are steaming up the river. You are boiling it to a steam level. So you become naturally hot. What easily brings people down can't bring you down. You become naturally stable. That's why the first thing the devil touches in the life of a believer is his prayer life. That's what gives your study life a fancy. That's why I don't concentrate on your study life as much as I concentrate on people's prayer life. If you are not red hot, if your spirit is not alive, you can't even carry the Bible to read. Your spirit will be weak. It was a life. They developed it till it became part and parcel of them. It's a Christian discipline. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus was teaching the doctrines of Christ, he said, when you pray, go to the closet. It was part of the doctrines he taught the early church. The art of prayer and the art of fasting. He didn't talk about it as in maybe they were looking for a need. There was an issue where a demon was dissolving and then it should go. He said, when you fast, it should be a lifestyle. Fasting to build your spiritual muscle. Give me Jude 120. Very quickly. The Bible says, for building up your most holy faith. Building up yourself in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer is one way we build our spiritual stamina, spiritual muscle, a consistent prayer life. These are some of the disciplines you must strive to make part of your life that it becomes a natural to you. And the rubbish we are seeing in the body of Christ will reduce. a week you, you fast fasting becomes a life not because there is a need what is fasting fasting is something that kills your flesh and release the spirit what money knows wrote a book he calls it releasing the spirit the bible says in first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7 he said but we have this treasure 
in eighteen vessels. They are treasures, but the pain there is, it is covered with these eighteen vessels. So when you fast, you are suppressing the flesh. You are putting the flesh to subjection, and you are releasing out those treasures, those spirits. You are twenty-four hours hot. A fly doesn't make a mistake to near fire. You are hot. God bears me witness. I stand on that God, not as an act of pride. For 13 years, I've never had a dream of somebody pursuing me. I made a vow if a demon is so powerful enough, go and sleep and dream that you killed me. Don't come into my own. It's an insult. That you need to appear to me in my own dream and tell me you want to kill me. It's an insult. Be so hot that the devil cannot touch you. Master the discipline of prayer and fasting. It must be part of your daily routine. May not the past that you didn't spend time communion with God. That's where intimacy is better. That's where consistency is, is better. In the place of prayer, as you learn to talk more to God, you get more intimate with Him. Grow your prayer life. Grow your prayer life. Grow your fasting life. I have never seen any man in the scriptures on the surface of this earth that amounted into, into, to anything in God or in life that didn't have a consistent prayer or fasting life. They were fasting machines. In my 13 years of knowing God, if I have had complete three square me, maybe 15 times in 13 years. I can't be as you. I said I came to talk to you with my life. What has given some of us consistency? What has made us stand in God? No scandal, nothing. I walked through this land successfully for five years. When the mighty things God was doing to my life, everybody was just looking for one thing. One. If they could just get one. And God refused to give them. His grace was shining on me. But how did I obtain that grace? In the place of prayer. In the place of prayer. That's how I obtained that grace. In the place of prayer. So go to a point that you naturally exhale fire. The words you speak are wrapped up with fire. That's why you are talking to an unbeliever. Nothing pierces his heart. We are just forcing people to go and evangelize. You are talking. No spirit is going out. You are killing. That's why they slap you. See, if you come to this place, they will slap you. Why? The words, the letter what? Kill it. It is the spirit that gives life to the world. I tell people, it is beyond what I am saying. Something leaves me. Backing up the word. That's why the life of the preacher is more important than the words he speak. The Bible says in a three minute sermon, Peter converted 3,000 men in a three minute sermon. Yet you, you told the person you give him a recharge card. Say, I'll take you to Mr. Biggs, just come to church. He said, No. He said, I know they come again. Your words is carrying no fire. That's why you stand before that interview panel and you are speaking. Nothing touches their heart. You talk like a normal average people, human in the world. You can get to a point your worse because of your prayer life and your fasting life. Everything about your life is you the aroma of heaven. The Bible says we are fragrance of Christ. We are fragrance of Christ. That's what we make a man standing still in this land, turn down 20 something jobs. It is something in Buarik thick tenor. It's an iota of grace. It's grace. Why? Everything, your name, your picture, your CV carries fire. A man sees it, he doesn't know why it's, it's, he, he decides to favor you. To get power with God, you would definitely pay a dear price for it. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 23 to 24, he said, I don't fight as one boxing the hair. I fight with him. 
you see for every athlete that strives for mastery he is temperate in all things have you seen an athlete that wants to become something that win the olympic and is not preparing you have to work out your salvation you have been saved but you work out this salvation with fear and trembling so if i ask some of us right now when last did you pray you will call your fellowship please and then you call yourself a christian when last did you fast you call, you call the time they declare general fast in your fellowship and it is configured in the life of a muslim to know that during a period i will fast for 30 days they don't play they don't even argue it they don't say ah, we, we, are we fasting must we fast the, the fasting does not mean god is moved you are a stupid christian any christian that tell drag those kind of argue just push them aside at this level you are still arguing whether people should pray and fast see it's not about it's not about fasting it's not you know it's just a word the word the revelation of light of god so you are a fool life sits on a man when his flesh is under jesus said there are many things that i choose to tell you you can't carry it the anointing the bible says in exodus 30 32 cannot sit on flesh he said let it be a practice in all generation let no mortal flesh carry the oil so the more you die the more oil you the more you die it must give me first timothy 4 7 it must be a lifestyle the discipline of prayer and fasting so that when you shoot out some tongues and one of my son was praying we were praying this afternoon preparing for the meeting and the spirit of the lord came mightily upon me i brought out tongues i don't know where they were coming from when we finished we knew something shifted so when i found out the bike the brakes point i knew something has been touched stop this premature manifestation premature exposure take time to grow take time to work out your salvation to build your spiritual to develop muscle and stamina in the spirit that when you talk just by the sound of your voice the bible says i will give you a wisdom the adversary cannot gain say you are counseling somebody that is demonized you are just talking to the person the demon is shouting that's the kind of believers you want to see you come here a smoker because of the fervency of your prayer life and your fasting life you have carried so much of the atmosphere of god that the smoker begins to tremble tremble at your atmosphere one of the things we had in our days of growing up i'll talk about it we had prayer books that's the way we were trained i was trained that it is irresponsibility if i wake up in the morning and not do my devotion you are asking questions must devotion be done in the morning you are crazy have you asked a Muslim man why he wake up by four to pray? He could have prayed as well, or that don't he pray other times of the day? Why must he still maintain that? They teach them as early as four years of old. If the person like let this let that child sleep one minute to four, when it is four, stand up and pray. I saw them today going to the mocks, and I saw the way they went to dress and change to find clothes for five minutes. Where a Christian cannot carry Bible to church. I can ask now. You see, many people do not come to church with Bible. Or they go and buy this small one. I can put this in a pocket. They will carry their mat to class. Because no stamina. So we had a prayer book. Here yeah, we put the, 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 the things we've been, we've been praying to God on. And we check whether He has answered them. So you, can, you must train yourself. That's how we knew God hears us when we call. Is it because they told you that Christianity is good? That's why you're here. I know is a God that hears me when I come. Oh, He knows my name. Lord, You know my name. He knows my name. Oh, He sees His death. He sees His death. But for and he hears me when I call. He hears me when he hears me when 
changes me where I call sit down. The discipline of prayer and fasting and this one maintain a daily prayer habit at least one hour. Maintain a daily prayer habit at least one hour. no man ever walked well with God no man ever finished strong in life there was not a prayer machine and a fast engine they fasted out their life till their mortal body become, became immortal I have seen men that were shot with bullets it couldn't enter them they fasted their life till the spirit was what was existing not flesh Some of us is like we signed a covenant with food. I know the things that are faced in life. And so I tell people, if not for the discipline of fasting, I would have been dead right now. I stand under God to say it. While as a student on this campus for five years, my friends is sitting down. I didn't eat any sister's food. I stand under God. Now, don't delete it from the message. For five years, no sister brought me a cooler one day. You can't even try it. She's here. I met that was my final year in school. She didn't cook for me throughout till I left that school. See you, everything that got. <sighs> Some of us even make it as a right. You know, shout for the sister. You didn't bring food this week. You are very stupid. See your life. See your life. Some of us as if we would die. We just deny ourselves of food one day. So the discipline of prayer and fasting, let's be very fast. It entails maintaining a daily prayer life for at least what? An hour. The unit of power is what? Kilowatt. What? The unit for energy is what? Joes. The unit for prayer is hour. If you pray 30 minutes, you have not prayed. You don't have a prayer life. You pray 30 minutes, you don't have a prayer life. Daily, you don't have a prayer life. No, but eventually you decide to give God your tithe of the day to talk to Him. We have 24 hours in a day, right? The tithe of 24 hours will be about two hours. No, you didn't go to school. Uh, no. mm -mm. 20 what? Four hours. You can't divide the four like that now. You forgot? <laughs> eh? Mathematicians. Who is reading mathematics? Uh, uh, whatever minutes at least there's even two hours <laughs> that you spend time just talking to him that's why I like a favorite quote I saw I never will listen to a man that has not first heard God a man that has not spoken to God I can't, I can't hear him when he talks because he will be speaking from the vantage point of flesh no matter how eloquent he is or the rhetoric of his speech so the unit for prayer is an hour. Cultivate the lifestyle. I did a study on cultivating the lifestyle of prayer. You get a message maybe next week. Cultivating the lifestyle of prayer. And a study on um, a, a message on the God's Jesus. Where I talked about my spiritual work and experience. How we started to pray. Right now I comfortably can pray 72 hours. Comfortably. I trained myself into it. And right now God is saying, so that's too low. Take it to 120 hours. Five days stretch. No sleep. I trained myself into it. The Bible says in Isaiah 64, is that no man has steered up himself to take a hold of God. No man has steered up himself to take a hold of God. When we wanted to learn how to pray, we'll set alarm. We started with 30 minutes. I'll set alarm. 30 minutes ahead. I'll pray. They say we should be praying tongues. Then that's how they grew us. Now start to pray. We'll pray first. Understand it to finish. When that tongue, then it was packeted on Shabbat, 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 Shabbat. You know, you are speaking like a newborn baby. Shabbat, Shabbat, Shabbat. We pray all the tongue finished. The alarm refused to ring. Then I now invented something I taught some of the children. They know it very well. Those that stayed with me while in school, sleeping in his presence, would just sleep. When you just say, say, Amen. Jesus, thank you. That's how we develop the prayer habit. What you do consistently for 21 days naturally become part of you. What you do consistently for 21 days 
naturally become part of you. That's why the Muslim doesn't struggle about prayer life. This is lecture. This is it's my prayer time now. We need to go and pray. So the unit for prayer is what? An hour. Train yourself to at least maintain a consistent prayer life of an hour daily. An hour daily. When I'm taking the last two points, I will touch the aspect of we be student and managing it. Maintain it. Let it be a lifestyle. The discipline of prayer and fasting and those number two, having a weekly schedule of fasting. Have a day in the week you set aside to fast. Have a day in the week you set aside to fast. See, these things are called Christian what? Discipline. Listen, listen, look up. Because discipline leads to habit. Habit leads to passion. What is discipline? Is doing what I don't feel like. Even a smoker went through those three parts. He first picked the cigarette. Ah, ah. He begins to practice it. Then it enters into what we call what? An habit. He does it whether he likes it or not. Then it enters into passion. He does it enjoying it. That's how we develop our life. You do it till it becomes a passion. I love to pray. I love to fast. I love to fast. They know me very well. There is nothing you can give me now that is food to move me. I will have finished myself on this campus. Some of them know. Those, those of them that were close to me. The temptation I saw with food. Oh, the brothers in my room. That's when I knew people don't have stamina. I wish some of them are here. Those they shall praise the Lord. Good. They will bring the food to my room, sisters. I will stay on the bed like this. And they know I won't eat too. I will pretend as if I'm not seeing the food. Chicken. Big, big ones. As if they select the kind of agri chicken they bring. Just to tempt. One says she loves me. And I love that too. <laughs> and you see the three brothers in my room. Heavy, heavy brothers in the fellowship room. Say, Papa. Shay, you know it. Papa. They'll be eating my bed. Sometimes I just go and carry it. I'll just shake my head. Oh, God. <laughs> A food your father rejects, you are eating. You are not feeling fine. And some will tell you they want to tap into your grace. So, have a weekly schedule of fasting, at least a day. What you are doing is that you are putting your flesh to subjection and releasing the treasures of God in your spirit. At least once a week you fast. Have it. Train yourself. While on this campus for five years, I didn't eat any morning food. They know me. Those of, I, I stayed with somebody all through my five years. I made it in life. So I do not be as if it's just what I preach on the blue pits. People watch me. I stayed with somebody from my first year to the last year and they school intentionally. I say, watch what I do. I don't live a double life. I don't eat anything beyond 12 noon for five years. Why? They call it breakfast. What is breakfast? You mean you are breaking something you just finished. What is that? Fasting. <laughs> That's how it got the name. So you woke up by six. Which fast did you fast? You slept all through the night. You say you fasted. Then some will call it night fasting. <laughs> then me, I've done like 50 something <laughs> days of night fasting. Then, hallelujah. Number three, the discipline of prayer and fasting entails doing nothing without talking to God first. This is where the way we are, ways we are trained. You do nothing without consulting God first. There is nothing to urgent that you cannot pray about. That's the way we are trained. In the discipline of prayer and fasting the bible says in proverbs 3 and verse 5 he said trust in the lord with all thy heart and lean not on thy own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him acknowledge him acknowledge him we were trained not to do anything without talking to god first the ancient secret to spiritual growth and stability number four the discipline of prayer entails reporting issues first to god before any man that's why I don't enjoy the rubbish I see Papa are you praying for me is that my destiny no. and somebody like that I've never sown anything to your life so are you praying for me so I should not sleep on your account it's only God that doesn't sleep or slumber I'm a man of God not God one of my daughter was asking me last week she was asking Papa what are you doing I said I'm eating say you eat I said no I'm not a mother. <laughs> That's how they see us. We don't eat. So you see, most of us men of God, we are scared now when we see people, uh, believers coming to visit us. We just hide the food. It's like they get discouraged if they see us eating. It means you are not a serious man of God. <laughs> so you 
must learn it and this reporting issues first to God before what any man. That's what I expect of the young believers. Before you can call me, even if I'm your spiritual father, tell me, sir, I have prayed about it. I just say, let me let you know. We are not a market square where you come to buy goods and go. We don't solve problems for people, we solve it with people. I don't care the way you grade me. You are not my thermometer to show that I'm anointed. Most of the time, people come to my office and say, Sir, I'm having this challenge and this and this. I say, Go and take a fast three days. When you are done, come, I'll pray for you. you no, know, they like the shasha one. The man of God says, I lose you, you are gone. I don't say goose. I teach you what gave me what will push it out. So by the time it comes back again, you know what you did. You just did without calling me. We will just make ourselves look like superstars. You don't solve problems for people, you solve it with what? God ever calls you into ministry. Don't let the people prove, put, put you under pressure. They want to check whether you're anointed. I knew before I started. If I needed, if I was not sure, I wouldn't start. So you are not the one that God told me I will see to judge whether I'm really anointed or not. Let to report issues first to God before you talk to any man about it. Stop living a life like you are contracting prayers. Any little thing, hello. Sir, please pray for me. Talk to God first. Those that are, uh, that are my children, you know they suffer that very way in my hand. Me, pray for you. Ask them. One of them, where is them, my friend? He told me, sister, I don't understand. If somebody just comes, shut up now, you just answer the person. Me, you are refusing to answer me. I said, did you see Jesus kill any of his disciples? Or was he not healing other people? You are my disciple. <laughs> That's the crime most of those close to us suffer more I don't attend to you because I don't want to make you dependent on me for the rest of your life what will you teach your own children if you don't have a standard prayer life if you don't know some of these things I'm saying what will you have to tell your children so when they go to school they will be calling you mommy when he's married say mommy me and my wife have issues mommy pray that's it is happening so the man has gone to Yahoo already no but what are we it entails striving for answered prayer. Strive to get your prayer answered. Watch when you pray. Don't shy away from it. Watch out, watch out. Did God answer this prayer? You are growing in your work with God. You are growing. So it builds your confidence to know I can pray and God will hear me. Strive for answered prayer, the discipline of prayer and fasting. And finally on that, have a prayer book. I learned this from Watch Money. Have a prayer book. In the prayer book, what you do is you write dates. Are you with me? You open a session, you write um, the subject matter. What did I pray for? Then you write the date God answered and how he answered you. It makes you to follow up your work with God to know that you are growing. So when you check that God is not answering you, you ask yourself what is wrong. Because if you are not sure God is not answering you, just continue life like that. There will be nothing to correct. Find out. The things I've been praying about, don't did God hear me? Hallelujah. The second discipline we must return back to. The things we need to strengthen the remains. The discipline of daily study of the word. And the memorizing of scripture. And the study of Christian literatures. The discipline of daily study of the word. And the memorization of scriptures. And the studying of Christian literatures. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. The Bible says. Study. And let this book of the law not depart from thy mouth, but meditate upon it day and night. And therein thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and you shall have good success. He didn't say, I will make your way prosperous. He said, you will make it by meditating upon my word. Some of the scriptures we know today, at a certain point, I could recite completely the Old New Testament. Now we, we have entered relationships, we are double-minded. the whole new testament he says it's not necessary it's not necessary i will show you when jesus was faced with a temptation in matthew chapter 4 verse 4 he was reading bible Abi. was he not reading bible no he said it was written you must memorize scriptures we learned it then that's i like my upbringing children sunday school then good morning parents in the lord our memory verse is taken from psalm 119 we didn't know something was happening to us we need them to be an average christian does not cover the bible 
you know some people don't know some stories inside the Bible? If I cut some stories now, I can show you that the person will not know I'm seeing it from the Bible. And the person wants Rema light. <laughs> Hallelujah. I like what Dr. Paul Leneche said. He said, if you don't stay with the written word, you will never encounter the spoken word. I like that statement. So I have two sets of Bibles. One for my daily devotion. And another for my deep study. That one is, I want to cover the Bible. Every year I cover the Bible twice to thrice. Every year. My daily, it must, it's natural. All you cannot study is your business. I like it. It refreshes my mind of the stories of the scriptures. It is as I do that, I begin to get light. No, just imagine. I'm a preacher now. I'm trying to prepare a sermon. And as I pick if one verse, suddenly he just brings my mind to another verse. If I don't know it, will I go there? I just will begin to play with scriptures. Study. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Unto God. That means there is a height you will hit in study before God will approve of you. the height you must eat in study before God will approve of you. One time a young man came to my office, bought some wonderful books. About 15, I was very impressed. I said, wow, you read a lot. He said, Sakai. No, he was just telling me about some fire that came into him and he needs to buy a book. I said, it's alright. I said, I'm actually right now, if I place my finger to approximate the number of books I've read, maybe about 2,500. He said, Jesus! <laughs> The Bible says, out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart, the mouth will speak. Out of the, it is what you are putting inside that when you are talking, the Holy Ghost takes from there. Out of the abundance of the heart. The Bible says in Psalm 1, verse 1 to the end, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the God, godly, but not sinned in the way of sinners, whatever, whatever. He said, but his delight is in the law of the law. He said, and in this law he meditate what day and night. He said, for this he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Let a day not pass by. You don't open your Bible to read. First Timothy chapter four and verse thirteen to fifteen. Paul gave an admino- admonition to Timothy. He said, continue on this, meditate on it, till thy profiting appear to all men see the benefit of what you are doing in your life study the word till it shapes your talk so that you talk naturally the word till it shapes your action till it shapes and adjusts even your dressing be so full of the word that when pressures of life come upon you you naturally bring out the word you don't know when you say it Psalm 119 I think on verse um 9 to 11. He said, how shall a young man keep his way pure? He said, by taking heed to the word and by, by what? Keeping your word in his heart. Memorize scriptures. Memorize scriptures. Some of you, the only scripture you have in your head is the one you did in your Sunday school. That's the only thing that's remaining now. It's not every time you have the opportunity to hold the fiscal word in your hand to minister life to people, to preach the word. Learn to memorize scriptures. Study the word. Study the word. Study the word. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 12 says the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. I rightly divide him through the soul, the heart, and the spirit of a man. Listening to messages, read good books. Listening to messages, read good books. Maintain this discipline till light hits you. And you have access to abundance of revelation. Paul said, I went up by the abundance of revelation given to me. So if you want to go up in life, you must be given abundance of revelation. Keep studying till light hits you. Some of us, you've not known anything you want to preach. You are looking for a mic, they should just give you. You are looking for a mic. That's why you are confusing everybody. You teach each of them to have answers to this question. But that thing you say, I don't really agree. <laughs> Thank you, our Father. Have a book and a Bible when you come to church. Have respect for revelation. 
when you don't have respect for revelation, God will never give one to you. Get a book and buy it when you come to church. So you can write. God knows you take his light to be of great value. In Job 29, David said, by thy light, I walked through darkness. By thy light, maintain a daily study life. Read books. Develop your spiritual muscle. Now the four things you do when you study the Bible, find or discover facts. Number one, find or discover facts. These are the basic Christian discipline. Basic Christian discipline. Find or discover facts. Memorize the word. Number two, memorize the word. Number three, analyze, deduce, and compare the word. Analyze, deduce, and compare the word. Number four, receive enlightenment from the word. Receive enlightenment from the word. The third discipline tonight, the discipline of early rising. The discipline of early rising is a basic Christian discipline that you must wake up very early in the morning. Give me songs of Solomon very fast. Let's just read two scriptures. I, I really want to dwell here. I know so many questions will come. Not, can't we pray? Can't we do devotions some other time? No. You do it at the dawn of the day. That's what is called the morning watch. That's why I like living faith. They maintain that still now. The morning watch. God gave an instruction to, to Moses. He said, let the manna be gathered by the dawn before the sun rises. So if you want to enjoy the manner of God, you must learn to wake up early. That's what the people of the other faith understand. The verse we read at the beginning, Job 3 8, he said, Those who are ready to rise up in the morning and take charge of the day, God respect that law he kept. Songs of Solomon, are you there? Give me chapter 7, verse 12. Songs of Solomon 7 12, very fast. He said, Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us get up early. Give me Psalm 57, verse 8 to 9, very quickly. Psalm 57, 8 to 9. Awake up, my glory. Awake, Sartre and Harp. I myself will awake early. Please, are you seeing? Early. And I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Verse 9. Okay, you combine. All right. Give me Psalm 108, verse 2 to 3. Very quickly. 108, verse 2 to 3. I really want to dwell on this. Oh. Okay. So you can jot that down. Psalm 108, verse 2 to 3. Psalm 90, verse 14. Psalm 78, verse 34. Psalm 78, verse 34. Psalm 63, verse 1. Psalm 63 verse 1 and Exodus 16 verse 21. When we check through the scripture, we find out that many of God's choicest men were men that were early risers. They had the daily habit and discipline of waking up early to meet God. That's why I gave you so much of the scripture. You can notice the topic for many debates. You must wake up early. Discipline yourself. That's where the people of the world is cheating us. Some will complain that they came back late from class. Have you seen a Muslim man complain to wake up by four to go to mosque? So you're coming back late from class is not an excuse. It is a discipline. It is a lifestyle for you. Wake up early! Some might complain, wow, I'm in an academic environment. How would I manage that? Set a fixed time that must not meet you on your bed daily. Set a fixed time that must not meet you on your bed daily. Now, when it becomes an habit, but eventually you miss it one day, they will understand with you. But when you're is every day you are missing it, you are not serious. You are not disciplined. Discipline means something you are you are, you are training yourself to do. And for the day you decide, maybe you wake up late. Your lecture is eight o'clock. Oh, you make you wake up seven forty-five, right? Very good. Father, I thank you for today. Say something to him. Say something to him. 
I told you it's an insult to wake up in the morning without talking to God. It's like waking up and passing your earthly father. You are stupid to do so. No matter how hard you are to meet up with an appointment, won't you greet your dad? At least you will not spend much time to talk with him because of your, you are in a haste, but you still say something to him. That's why Jesus started the Lord prayer by saying what? Our father. Prayer is based first from the understanding of the fatherhood of God. That there is a father who is in heaven. You must train yourself if you want to enjoy daily manner. So when he says, and give us this day our daily bread, he was talking about revelation. If you want to enjoy this daily manner, you must learn to be an early riser. Every man that amounts to anything in God was a man that was an early riser. Go and trace them. All of them. One time I was, I was um, listening to the tape of John, Apostle John Suleiman. He said, God forbid at 3 a.m. catch me on my bed. I said, Jesus, 3 a.m. And none of you is as busy as that man. You don't have an excuse. They trained themselves. Bishop David O'Ebo said for the past 30 something years, he sleeps how many times a week? How I many I mean hours a day? Three hours. And he's looking earlier than you. See the way he preaches. Now you don't. Try it if you know for a grace thank you our father wave your hands to him give him praise so early morning is the best time and we must learn to give God the best time I like what what man he said he said it, it, it is a fool that will spend the whole of his day in the world and then in the evening when he don't get tired need down to pray or study the Bible you are, you are not serious with God you will spend your best time in the day then when you are tired you just hold the bible you know you are you are tempting sleep to come and that's when you want to study let's look at some brief example of men that were early risers in scriptures number one abraham give me genesis chapter 19 verse 27 abraham genesis 19 27 put, just put one of the scriptures on the on the screen genesis 21 14 genesis 22 verse 3 abraham examples of early risers in scripture abraham number two jacob now the bible says and abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he was stood before god he got up when early in the morning it was a life for those of us that are fellowship officials here please i encourage you when there's a new convert in the fellowship give them this give them this message to listen to they can start it early in their work they will finish well in God number 2 Jacob Genesis 28 verse 18 we have Moses you see that in Exodus 8 20 Exodus 9 13 and Exodus 24 verse 4 and Exodus 34 verse 4 another example of an early rise that in scripture is Joshua we see that in Joshua chapter 3 verse 1 Joshua chapter 6 verse 12 Joshua chapter 7 verse 16 Joshua 8 verse 10 Another example is Gideon, Judges 6, verse 38. We have Anna, 1 Samuel 1 19. We have Samuel, 1 Samuel 15 21. We have David, 1 Samuel 17 20. Job, Job chapter 1, verse 5. Job chapter 1, verse 5. We have the apostles in the New Testament, Acts chapter 5, verse 21. And we have Jesus. We see that in Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Even Jesus had it as a custom to wake up early in the morning. Give me what Mark 1 35. Very quickly. Then we have Mary, Luke 24, 22, Mark 16, 9, John 20, verse 1. Mark 16, 9, John 20, verse 1. Now look at the story of Jesus. Mark 1 35. Listen, everybody, watch. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day. He went out and departed into a solitary place. And there he was prayed. Discipline yourself to eat. If you want to wake up, sis, Charles Wesley, had, Charles, um, Wesley, he had the record of waking up 4 a.m. He just maintained a two hours prayer life of early rising every morning. 4 a.m., 4 to 6, he's awake. He maintained it. So sometimes it's not how long, it's how consistent you be. That's why I respect a man that prays one hour or even 30 minutes daily than a man that prays six hours once in a month. You expose yourself too much to spiritual arm. Why? You, that's why, listen, when you see some young men, sometimes they come, they complain to me and say, sir, anytime I pray long, 
that's the time I do something very stupid. And I explain why. When you pray for such a long time, I learned that from my spiritual father. When you pray for such a long time, what you have done is that you have jacked up your spiritual level to a height. So when you are coming down, your flesh will want to maintain that height. Because the Bible says in Galatians chapter, chapter 3 verse 16, it said they are always fighting each other. So you find out that you, the time you pray highest, that's when you went and do one stupid thing. For brothers, most of the time they masturbate. I think I just saved somebody a lifetime question right now. That's the reason why. So it is more of a consistency. So don't come and do shaka once in a month, 10 hours. You won't last. Maintain a consistent life of early rising. Maintain a consistent life of early rising. So please go back. We might not have time to read some of all these scriptures, but go back and study them. You must make it. Put your alarm. Even at this height, I still set alarm. Let it wake, wake you up. And when it, when it rings, please make an attempt. Because <laughs> some of us will just change the thing. When you now wake up, you say, ah, did the alarm change itself? No, it was you that hoped it. There's no angelic force there or demonic being. Be disciplined. Finally, for tonight, the discipline of a life of purity. These are the things a young man should be trying to attain before he starts talking of carrying positions of responsibility. He must have maintained consistency in these disciplines. He must have maintained consistency before you are fathering or mothering anybody. If the church want to force you into anything, tell them I don't yet have a consistent prayer life. I don't yet have a consistent life of studying the word. Let me grow first. Let me take time to grow. Because I tell you, when you fall flat before temptations and trials, it is that same church that will fight you. The same body of believers that will kill you. And so you see what we are saying? They were bragging, bragging, bragging. See now, a girl is pregnant. <laughs> see, we've been saying it. We've been saying, ah, that brother, we know. As if they've been waiting for you since to fall. Hallelujah. The discipline of a life of purity. Give me um First Peter 1, verse 15 to 16. Very quickly, I want to play with this a little bit. First Peter 1, 16. 15 to 16. Please, very fast. First Peter 1, 15 to 16. Shilagabaladash kemanahati agadabo shalach. Shebapati agabalagadash. First Peter, who is on the project? First Peter 1, 15 to 16. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of what? Conversation. Verse 16. But as, so be you, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. It means that we make you holy. Say, be it. That means God has placed it in your, in your hand to be holy. What is holiness? To be separated unto God. To be separated unto God. Sometimes people come and share some situations to me in the office and I tell them, under God, it is not a demon, you are indisciplined. Give me Hebrews chapter 12. Let's see something there. Hebrews 12, 2. Very fast, please. Or 12, 3. Hebrews 12, 3. Hebrews 12, 3. The person on the project, please help me. Hebrews 12, 3 to 4. But consider him that endures such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. Verse 4. You have not resisted unto blood, striving against him. Have you done it to a point where it cost you your blood? Some of us, our problem is indiscipline. It's the demon. Just bug men of God unnecessarily. Pray for me. I've been trying, trying, trying. You are indisciplined. Strive for a life of purity. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, it said, If a man budget himself, he shall then be used as a vessel for honor. The budget was left in the hand of a man. Listen, listen. Who does the budget? God. But a man must position himself for it. When you go to the bathroom, right? When you enter the bathroom, there is a soap there, right? Does it wash you naturally? You carry the soap and wash yourself. What does the washing? The soap. So we are not trying to take grace out, grace out now and bring works. He said, have you resisted sin to the point of death? This is what you should concern yourself first for before you are running to, to, to showcase yourself and preach one little iota revelation you have. Strive for a life. 
to discipline yourself for a life of purity. Be willing to stand for truth. Never you abuse the grace of God and enter into licentiousness. I heard the story of a young man who slept with his spiritual daughter and was giving her scriptural verses of why you don't need to worry. <laughs> See, the Bible says when you just confess or say you are purged, they should flog you. No wonder the world no longer have regard for us again. Because of the rubbish we have done. See, deacons disgracing Christianity in their workplace, collecting bribe. I did the INEC election. Ten, ten, see, that's when I knew it is easy to fall. I saw oh God I needed money. So I was a, 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 a residing officer in my police unit. And it, it just came. They said, but they don't pack the extra papers back. Get them to print. You know, they now permitted manual. That's how they just go brown. And you know, they like using new, new one. <laughs> just, I looked at the thing and I said, Jesus. <sighs> Let me be sincere with you. I was, I was almost tempted. He said, but have you resisted sin to the point of what? Death. Be disciplined. Discipline yourself to a life of purity. Try to attain it. Walk towards it. The Bible says, flee youthful lust and every form of ungodliness. The discipline of purity entails you not compromising your faith for anything the world has to offer never you compromising your faith for anything the world has to offer rise up to your feet shigamanando sopilatanadash shigamanando sopilatanadash shigamanadash shigamanadash now listen 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 if your neighbors if your roommates if your family members if your church members cannot attest for you that you are a true believer you are not one the bible said this light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not if they cannot attest to you that's why you must strive for a life of purity till the world can see it and say clearly that you are a born again Christian. It will show in your conversations. It will show in your dressing. See how much we have abused the use of dressing. I'm doing a study very soon on Christian dressing, Esther, and the covering of hair. Let's check it out. Let's see what the scripture is talking about there. But see how so much of, some of us have abused. We have see the original intent of, of dressing was what? Covering, not fashion and the men and the man and the woman knew that they were both naked and God took the foreskin of a goat and covered them the original intention of dressing is what covering so if the first thing you check in your body when you wear a dress is that you are not covered you have abused the purpose of dressing that's the first thing you check covering lift up your hands and worship it. these are the foundations we must begin to pray now give me Psalm chapter 11 verse 3. These are the Christian foundation we must strive for. Shigamato zala hapiketola shkwaminesh. Zibaladata shkabira haskemena hasadaya. Next we will continue the next four. Now listen. The Bible says if the foundations be destroyed. What shall the righteous do not be unrighteous? That means a righteous man's foundation can be destroyed. Not a sinner. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? So we must make sure these foundations, these Christian foundations, are established before we can we can talk on anything big in the Christian faith. Give me Hebrews chapter 5. Very quickly. Hebrews 5, Holy Ghost. Jesus. Give me 13. Hebrews 5, 13. Give me. Hebrews 5, 13. Good. For everyone that uses, give me verse twelve. Let me start from verse twelve. For when the time ye ought to be teachers, you have no, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, 
and have become such as have need of meat and not of strong meat next verse for everyone that useth meat is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe next verse but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age you take time to grow you discipline yourself till you attain full age in the Christian faith those that are of what? full age it's just that it's not an age that has to do with number yes, will have been able to calculate it I know your age in God so even God expects you to what? grow to full age take time to grow develop these things first in your life before you talk of anything else as you will fall that's why they could tell us to carry salt and drink and the guy was joking and we drank doing vigil because of no Christian foundation sometimes I wonder what were we hearing in the church what were we hearing in the church he said those who are foolish who, who does by reason of use by reason they have discipline he said they have ex, they have, they have their senses what exercise exercise give me first Timothy 4 7 exercise discipline discipline disciplined give me first Timothy uh, first Timothy 4 7 finally but refuse profane and old wives fable stop this dragging of revelation looking for somebody who want to share a new remnant you got stop it first he said but rather exercise thyself unto what godliness exercise subject yourself to Christian disciplines that's the ancient secret to stability and growth that's what kept this man put for God to the end they had stability in God they have undergone the they undergone the process of character formation so many of us are bringing shame to the Christian faith so many of us that's why some of us we just some people don't even receive our ministries again they say forget all these spirit spirit people they are rubbish they don't, they don't have character because of the rubbish the young people are doing because of the rubbish so people have no more regard for our ministries people are abusers one time a lady sat under my meeting for completely a month and she was not getting blessed right? because she was abused by, by somebody like me who four people under the anointing they fall <laughs> they fall and she told me when we later met and she shot, wow, this person is different. This is let me be sincere with you. I was not really hearing anytime you start not whatever you are, just sit down. Because it was somebody like you that did this to me. And then give me money to go and abort. So we are causing the body of Christ pain. We are causing the body of Christ pain. I know the pain I have faced in life. I know the insult I have received. Very rare. Will you see people that believe we even have character? I have heard so many things. So many. Get there, forget that they are just jumping here and all these young people would see because of the rubbish young people that will not want to sit down and learn, sit down and grow. You are looking for who to preach to, but you don't have a basic Christian foundation and discipline. You are looking for where to preach. You have not gathered enough virtue. You don't know that when you start talking, virtue leaves you. It leaves after this meeting. It is expected of me that I go back to refill. The Bible says Jesus knew that virtue left him. So you talk all your life and leak out your power out of you. So when the temptation comes before you just for peace, you bring disgrace to the general body of Christ. Come to department. Just little expo. The thing refused to come. You try to remember it, refused to go just like this. And they say it's not where I say all these stupid Christian brothers. No longer stamina. Who will teach next week? When we we'll continue on understanding the discipline of the trial of faith, where they have also stopped the people they were leading to Christ, that come it is of necessity that you will go through this kingdom by trials. You understand where you need to walk. hold on to God even if He choose not to do anything for you. People are not trained. That's why we have robbers and prostitutes who could not wait and will take an alternative route. Take time to grow. Subject. He said, rather exercise yourself. It is your job. A disciplined life of prayer and fasting. A disciplined life of the study of the word, of the memorization of scriptures. Memorization of scriptures. 
study Christian literature, read book, learn the experiences of others, where they have fallen and where they have stood in God. For the best way to learn is from the successes of others and the failures of others. Only a fool waits to make his own mistake and learn. That's why I tell any young man, any of my sons standing with me, that chooses to go through my experiences in life, you are a fool. But you can simply learn them at my feet. of prayer and it's not prayer and fasting papa is praying we also pray and get you yeah. go sit down go sit down learn from the successes of others and the people study subject yourself you know people pray and fast for you to come down people pray some 40 men bound themselves with an oath that they will not eat or drink till they see Paul dead bound themselves with an oath you need pray where there is a situation and you fast when there is a need to fast. Only when exam period come, prayer strict. See, I, I pray they cancel it. This exam prayer. No, what is exam prayer? You never prayed all through the semester, it's through exam. Do you know you will provo- provoke God more? The Bible says he is not mocked. That's a mockery. In theory, more wrath. What you should be praying for at that point in time, you don't have to work with God, is mercy. To make him look like a fool. You think God is something you use and dump at your will. The consult and when you run, you only run to you when you have help and need. Develop this stamina, grow in it. I beg you, take the time to grow. I beg you, I beg you. No matter what it will cost you, if it will cost you to set alarms, to maintain early writing, to maintain a prayer life, please do. It has nothing to be in prayer unit, it's a discipline. Exercise yourself. Subject us. I told you, I said for the past 13 or 14 years with God, I have had three square me 50 times. It's not even up to I'm approximating 50 times. I ate three times a day. You know, when I, when I was talking to one of my daughters, she said she wants to go and cook afternoon food. I said, ah, they eat that time. I don't know money afternoon again. No. It's no longer in life. So you are now wondering what is keeping these people going? What is giving them such a stamina? Have I seen messed mess, mess up state of my life? Yes. I have gotten to a point where I saw every reason to leave God. But I knew they taught us early that who is God you say you want to follow? Follow him to death. The Bible says in Hebrew 11, they died believing. That is faith. To die believing. See, they've taught us for our God. So you see, a young, because he failed this semester, he says he's not going to church now. He wants to face his academics. <laughs> he's not going to church. That's what they taught him. But what they taught us is even when you slay me, all seems to delay me. I will never let go. I will never let go. Oh, even if I'm lost at any point, I will never let go. I'll keep holding on to you. I'll never let go. Oh, even when you slay me, oh God. Even if you slay me. Oh, chills to delay me. Oh, to delay me. I'll never. I'll never, never let go. I'll keep holding on to you. I'll never let go. Oh, even if I'm low. Even if I'm low. I will never let go. I will never let go. I will never let go. Now listen, 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 listen. I gave my life to Christ November 14, 2003. Before I smelt the first position of responsibility in my life was around 2006, 7. And you know the first position they gave me the church wardrobe manager don't be impressed by the manager in front of it if i tell you what it you know there's nothing managerial about it my job hmm, is that after every service before they share grace i'll just run to his our wardrobe and be collecting gowns the choir girl <laughs> as i said there's nothing managerial about it that's the first post i even handled but you see a young believer he gave his life today instead of him to go and sit down and walk out his salvation he's looking for mike he likes the way he likes the way papa stan preach if i if i, if I can hold this man Man, I just saw some revelation. The thing 
very sweet. He didn't know that's how he ate. See, if I tell you my walk with God, you will weep for me. There was a point I cried throughout consistently for one year. Now imagine if you didn't, if I didn't have some stamina in God, I served God faithfully in a place in a land, did all my best, was killing myself for people, for families. Three days after my exams, he called me, my, your mom is dead. And I asked God, is that my reward, living the land? Three days, if not, see, you won't understand it, except you'll be my, sure, I don't pray you'll be one. Three days! I said, what? Is that my reward? Yet you were, you know, it could be painful, especially if you truly have a work with God. I finished my school 2000 and 2003, 4, within that space of time. I applied for admission. Got all the, any highest score you can think of. That was when I just gave my life to Christ. No admission. My friends with lower score we get. And I did myself. I said, I will not go to a polytechnic. My daddy bought the first form. He said, anytime, I don't know if I put your own. It doesn't work out. Okay, let's just try. He knows people. But the university, I'm at the Bello and um, the polytechnic. They say, Let, let's put your... He bought the form. I point to his face. He says, I need to tell me. We were feeling ourselves. <laughs> we didn't know this life we say we want to follow. We will through much trials and enter the kingdom. Because it is through those trials he's shaping us. And that's how I stayed looking for admission three years. I got into the polytechnic system 2006. Have you seen pain? I got to a point after I taught those papers and I had an issue with my dad. My dad looked at me and said, I regret having you as a son. I regret having you as a son. For three years, it had nothing to do with my life. You just see the suit we wear today, you think it's by like that. Then these guys are enjoying. Come on, carry my mic. Then you know that I am under this soil right now, doing the work for God without no salary coming from anywhere. I'm not taking a pay from this ministry. I am surviving by like that. Let's scholarships and 20 something jobs here. Thank God some of my children see them. 20 something jobs now. It's only a man that God has developed in the secret place that can take such decision. If you some of you, if you see the temptations I saw, you can't stand it. You must not, there's no grace realm. You start up it as a Sunday school church in one church. Tell God, you know, who can plant this for God. Say, don't worry. I went to a church and I'll start up a group and I'll give it grace. Right now. <laughs> he said, Leave everything and follow me. That's where I am right now. No salary, no hope, monthly of money coming from anywhere. On that God, I say it. He has dealt with me. There were years where I cried com- consistently. 365 days. There was no day I didn't cry. There was no day I didn't cry. Asking God, why? What went wrong? This Christian I decide to follow like this is a crime. Why are you doing this to me? I thought it was just going like that. You see, these were the things that shaping us to have a disciplined prayer life. When the admission um, issue came up, that was the first time in my entire life I fasted 40 days stretch. Nobody declared it for me. The first 40 days I did in my life. I said, per adventure, there was a demon. When I finished my polytechnic system, I was supposed to come into the university. I had a scholarship. I finished the overall best year in the Polytechnic. So they, they, they sponsored us abroad. And I prayed. I said, I told you, he said, consult him first before you take a step. He has our lives. He says, he knows the plan he has to us, so they are all good. He doesn't expect us to make one for ourselves. We just need to connect to the Spirit and download his plans. But you are saying, you know the plans he has for you, yet you know where you are going to tomorrow. You know everything you have planned is. <laughs> we are just doing Christianity as if we have, you know, just use sense and follow God. And I prayed, and God said, F you, Timina. I read the electrical electronics first class. So you know it should be somebody that is crazy that should apply back chemical. Even if you have VC, we look at the best admission. So I was thinking on the VC's behalf <laughs> or the admission panel. See how would they see first class electrical and the person that applied chemical? Is he a fool? There was no relationship between the two courses. He has dealt with me. He has slayed me at every point he can. He has broken me every way possible. If I have the opportunity, I will still beg him to leave my mom. Let me still see your face. And I told my dad, I said, I want to change back to chemical. God is saying I should apply. The whole house turned upside down again. Turned upside down. He met some of his friends. He said, Ah, what is wrong with that person? I was, the whole house was against me. Only my mom stood by me. Said, This one, I know he hears God. 
just apply I'll give it my life nothing concerns me and you again see that the foolish life you want to live and we are following God preaching here and there it looks like we are, we are the useless set of people has become the chief cornerstone right now because where this feet has entered but eventually till he dies his leg will never enter the busy pastor too <laughs> we have preached in our, my, my base the churches have entered he has never seen them to enter to go my dear he has never seen it and that's how it was for us and I bought I, my mom gave me the mom to buy the form I bought here yeah, direct entry I wrote chemical and she came out she was so scared she was scared she said okay take another money buy two forms so you apply chemical and, and electrical and another one I slept I had a vision at night I said mommy God said faith is keeping my egg in one basket not many baskets if it will ash let it ash if it will not leave it I said I'm not buying a second form I read well for the then we write D I don't know whether they still do it we write them as D I wrote I got 260 over 400 my papers are still there first list I didn't see my name see the devil has touched me God has dealt with me I'm trying to tell you how we survived life it wasn't rosy first list no name second list I didn't see my name in that period I was fasting 40 days 40 days second list no name I call one of my friends here. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, that's Pastor Festus. The other brother to my friend, Godfrey. I called him myself. I go help me check. He checked. They said, they, they, no, your paper is not in this school. What? I said, okay, let me calm down. I came here. I was fasting. Then I was in Bosu. I was praying. I said, God, what is happening? My daddy got mad. He said, it's what we are saying. Children that will not hear what. I fast. I was tempted. He made, when they told me, they thought this was out. Got angry and took food like this. I think about past 11 11 25. Then I was playing. I could remember the song I was playing. Jesus, take the wheel, take it from my hand. That's why I can't forget that song in the hall. I took the food like this. I said, Let me eat. What is, what is this fasting for again? And I looked at it. I said, At least let it be for pride that I completed the 40 days. <laughs> I achieved something. I just left the food. They brought one supplementary list. I didn't see my name. Only for me to hear that they say the next day on the Thursday is my trick. I shamefully carried my things and going back to Zion. My name came out in every chapter magic. Oh, here we do slay. All seems to delay. I will never let you. Now, hold on, listen. Listen. With my work with God, I was ministering one time in a pulpit. They ceased my voice. They are, see, we learned, we've learned, we've grown. We've grown in God. They seized my voice for 30 minutes. I was coughing out blood. They took me out of the stage like that. Have you seen shame? You are looking for my mic. Come and carry. 30 minutes. You couldn't hear. You are coughing out blood on a large meeting. They took me out like that. The stage. Disgraced. And people laughed at me and said, What we are saying? But we are still standing. I have fixed it. As I told you, the little point of my life. These are the things that give us stamina to stand. The daily discipline. The daily discipline. I think when I lost my, uh, my mom, that was a Saturday, right? Did I not come to church on the Sunday? Thanksgiving service. They wanted to cancel it in Jake. I said, God forbid. Do it. Let me leave what I've been preaching. Do it. Hold this service. And I came. Though in the pain, I still danced. I tried. It wasn't easy. Because she was like my life after Jesus. The closest person to me on the surface of this earth. I was dancing with church. We were shocked. I finished it. Three days. Is it three days or two days? She called you last, right? We were talking. She was happy. Wow, at last. The person I kept all hope on. I was so confident of this person's life. She's gone. A magic I spoke to her last night. No sickness, nothing. I'm trying to prove to you that we followed God against all odds because of him. He has developed our stamina in him. I have seen there are semesters where I put all hope in God. I failed. Even with the Holy Ghost in me, I have entered into the hall and remembered nothing. I can't forget the course I wrote in this school, CIA 451. No, something probability also. It was like they formatted my brain. 
So sometimes you don't know when you come to my office and you say, Sir, I am experienced brick fellow. You are just giving me a reminder. Though I encourage you, I'm just looking at my life. Say, oh, if this one can still hold on to God the way I hold on. I wrote nothing. God pays me this. I didn't answer one question. I wrote all the questions back. <laughs> I said, God, what is this? Do I read? I came out of the hall. Just knowing I know. Married him. I know I have carried his name on my head. I know. Married Behind every story, every glory you see, there is a story. Behind every glory. While on this campus, then I was a president. To tell you how much the discipline, Christian discipline has helped me in life. A young man, one of my friends, looked from me, you know, one of our sister fellowship, he looked at me. He said, you are the poorest president on this campus. You know why? I don't buy handouts. I use scope. I say, if you read this one, give me. <laughs> Does it mean I don't have the money? Sweet. They know me very well. There were people holding my ATM or tools. I give out my life. I told my parents, I said, don't worry. Just keep money. The only thing I want you to send to me monthly is how much did they send? 5,000 naira. Or through five years in FET Mina. One time I was a president sitting in my seat. A young man came to give testimony in the fellowship. He said, though they reduced my allowance to 20,000. <laughs> I just sat down my I said, president, I said, I said, look at this boy. <laughs> oh God. That's my poor one allowance. And you know how painful it was for me? I don't eat people's food. I have stayed in everything in two weeks, no food. I was drinking water. They know me very well. Two weeks, no food. I'll drink water. And I'll still smiling. Looking well. Then when I go to fellowship, I'll be singing some sanctimonious song. I'll give myself to everybody with falling down that day. And I'll say, why are they falling? I'm sinking my pain. <laughs> they don't understand. My pain is what I'm seeing. Five thousand. That's what I survived through monthly or through the university. Five thousand. Now some of you are collecting more than that. You see yourself. You are complaining. I'm just giving you a reason to hold on. What kept us, kept us stable was Christian discipline. We've developed no stamina in God. Please don't miss next week for anything as we wrap up. The last for is bloody. Just use this one as the foundation. The last for is bloody. The things you must know in God, you make up your mind for them. It's not something to debate or argue whether you should be praying or not. Praying. It's not a debate topic. It's not even a topic that we should be preaching in church. It's a normal thing that immediately I'll give your life to Christ. They tell you now, eh? You must start praying daily. It's not a topic. Say how to pray. Develop a prayer life. Go on, scrap it out. As you give your life to Christ in that first class, just there you see, this is what you are signed in for. You say, come here down. Is heavy lady, let him come unto me. Take my yoke, for my yoke is light and my body is easy. He calls it yoke. <laughs> then though he said it's light, he said it is easy, he still called it body. <laughs> he will strip you of everything. He will discipline you in every way, capable. He will touch you every way you need to be touched. I can't share so much to us. I can't share so much. So much. One time we are just following God, you no know, doing our best like this. I just came one time and they say they brought a lady to my house. What happened? They say she's pregnant. See, that's why I say if your parents don't know you are a Christian, you are not one. My mommy swear on her life that if she rather died to believe that it was her son. One, one acts in my place, in my area. People use me as an example to their children. We'll be talking, say, I wish God give me picking like this. I live my life follow God. I might not be social, but I am touching more in God. Where this feet has entered. Some of you might not even enter yet, you die. But I'm praying you will enter. The places this feet has gone to. The people this person has met in life. And so I came home. My mother said, This is what they said happened. But you know, I still believe you. I said, Really? I was angry. I said, Kai, this is stigma. 
Lord, I give you three days. If you don't vindicate me, take me away. Three days, she couldn't lift up from the bed. You know, they just felt I was Mumu. I don't used to talk. So if they just tell me, I said, hmm, Jesus Christ. Then the two will go like that. Eh, eh. My grandfather, John Simon, taught us something. He said, to err is human. To forgive is divine, not for human. <laughs> to forgive is what? It's for God. <laughs> Lift up your hands. We'll continue next week. I'll share some of my experiences with you. So I to strengthen you. Please hold on to God. Hold on. Maybe you are here. You have done all your best. You are praying. You are fasting. You are reading every reading you can read. Yet your academies does not say it. See, I stand on that God to tell you you will bless it. As long as you are confident it will be best you did. Jesus knows all about my struggles. He will guide till the day is gone. But there is not a friend like the lonely Jesus. No, not one. No, not Oh, Jesus knows. Jesus knows. All about my soul. And listen so I just remembered something that made me shed tears now I remember the way we were going with God and zealous with him one time a woman looked at me and told my mom that's when I was passing through the issues with my admission so are you sure that's why I cried now that this boy is not cost are you sure he did not do something that somebody cost him <laughs> I know what I've been through in life that's why you see we talk sometimes with such a hem of confidence we are not scared to face any man because he has dealt with us so are you sure it's not cost one time one of the women in my in my church looked at me so this one you are just jumping here and there you are just you won't you go and do something to your life he told me that's me today Everybody's looking up. That I said, I don't joke when I come on there. I remember the place where you brought me from. Lord, I thank you for where I am today. I see you doing a new walk in Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the future I see. Please take the time to grow in God. I beg you. It has helped me today. Take the time to grow in God. I beg you. Don't be in a rush for anything. There was something I used to tell myself those days. Don't struggle, Stanley, to be known. Just keep knowing. One day what you have known will make you to be known. You will get to a point you can't hide yourself again. Everywhere you step, you find yourself. People see the aroma of His presence. In the secret. I like what one of our fathers said. When God is putting you in the secret place, most of the time everything there is secret. You don't understand. You can't explain. Why am I going through all these things? Sometimes there will be no answers. Because everything there is also what? I beg you. I beg you. Take the time to grow. Love God with the whole of your heart. Follow him. Forget. See, allow the world to be running. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Leave them. Then some of my mates then, they used to laugh at me. I said, fast all these guys. 
said, what are you doing? One time I went back home. One of them called me on the program. I said, I'm sorry, I'm in a meeting right now. He said, ah, really? Is your way want to be following now? He's now looking for God. One time I was in the service. They invited me for a meeting. I was entering into the meeting. One of my classmates there too that used to mock me. He saw interest follow me. I was walking in. And he wanted this time. He just blocked him like this. I passed him. And I sat in my seat. Jesus. There will come a time in life. Not only in heaven. Yet God will separate men. It's a time in life. Check some of our parents and their mates. They all had the same thing. But life and time has separated them into different classes of people. Is that not so? Life has separated them. That's why some of them see the way they cry for you and say, do your way, do it. They don't want you to repeat their lives. Please hold on to him. Don't be in a rush. Forget this thing. Forget. Forget. I, I was hungry when I hear sometimes you see some people are begging. Say, come on to father, you come and be my son. Hey, me. You will kill me to ever hurt. Or that I love it for a stage. Only last year I turned down 30 something ministrations. This year, though, some of my sons know. Many. I should lobby for a stage to preach. Then you were not to revamp. It, you were just showing that you had nothing. So they can't sit. You are trying to make them sit. Why are you lobbying? What are you looking for? If I saw this mic to hold. And the day God truly brought me to the open. Now I've been ministering, I've been preaching quietly. You no, know, sometimes we'll see young brothers then falling back, 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 the anointing, heavy, moving in the meeting. We we're just following God. Nothing was coming. The first time I saw the rope of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's when I knew that if a man truly followed God, he will encounter him. There was a time in this campus. Where, where's the apparel? Choir. I can't round up a meeting. If you just say I should round up, I should hold the mic now and say, you deserve the glory. People are running to the bush. They just, let's bring up Ross Stand to come and land of service. People are scared. Hey, what will happen? Hey, the people are already tying themselves not to fall. It was, it was wrong. It, it, something is already happening to you. God is just waiting for his appointed time. Don't rush before time. Have you asked yourself what would have happened to that coat if Jesus had gone to ask for the coat? It was not there. My paraventure by that time, the coat would have been dead. But it saw that coat running through the street. It was just patiently waiting and waiting, undergoing processes of God. And when it was time, mortal men were putting their clothes for it to match. Something no coat had that record of in the Bible. Mortal men, they knew Jesus would not touch it. They were putting their clothes to match. See, I have gone to a point where people clean my shoes. They will clean it in meetings. We are Timothy. I ministered in your church, right? They will clean your shoe. They want to lick it. And that's why I get angry when some people say, No, 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 no. They don't allow people to do that. They should not. No, they are giving it. Did Jesus tell them not to put the clothes on the ground? When he knew he was not the one matching it, let the coat match it. It was to have paid the price to carry him. They are doing it for him, not me. So when we come into meeting, you see people are shouting, clapping, like God came down. Yes, they are seeing him. You mean, do all you can to carry his presence. The world will do anything, anything for you. Anything, anything for you. Anything. We are following him with our life. We are following him with our life. They were laughing at us, mocking at us. Like he said, he faced the condition of sinners. He said, look at this young man. You don't know what you are doing. No direction for life. Don't go and get serious with your destiny. But right now where we are standing, they are not standing there. Please follow God with your life. I don't know tonight. God just came to talk to us. Stop this premature man. You are looking for what? What are you looking for? What do you want to show now? You will last long. They just managed to tell you now that you can sing. The presentation you led was powerful. You just went straight studio. Up from service studio. You want to go and do song. Then after you sang one, ten years, no song came out again. Studio. Or if you are a boy, you just buy a dog chain and put it. Then you bring your trousers small and put this big towel. 
Say she does two bits. It's outside you want to clean your body. Then you put one comb. They told you that you can sing. Nobody heard what they did. No, is that not the rubbish going on? They beg you. Carry his presence for real. I've seen his raw presence. Where Timothy? Where's Timothy? Now I was in a meeting in their church in Canada. I asked them to come and meet me there. I was ministering the presence of God was so mighty. People were dropping down in the streets. It was I have not done it to me. I don't want to do that. I want to give you foundation first. Give power. Jesus is the whip, the power of God. First Corinthians 1 24. Let's touch wisdom first. Then we'll come to power. And stability and ability balanced. I got so raw in the anointing. I said, Come, Lord, I pour it on the street. People were passing the street and falling. That was we are the one those days looking at you. Hi, so boy. The cripple walk out. But that did not push us to go and do foolish things. We knew that everything that bows to any man in the spirit is from the vantage point of his spiritual energy. It is not faith talk. And so we took the pain. We took the pain. So those Christian disciplines you in, uh, uh, undergo daily, they are giving you spiritual energy. Spiritual energy. Spiritual energy. Spiritual. Something is happening already to you. Leave the world. Let them ex exhaust everything they have. See, to tell you how much it helped me a lot. Those of them that say, where's Doze? Where's Doze? He stayed with me all throughout my 500 level. Three of them, three of the officials. They stayed with me throughout my 500. Did we miss devotion once? I said, I'm busy as an official. As a president, I fasted 40 days, three times in seven months. And I did I declare it for fellowship? You now come and lie. God says you go and fast. He wants to do something to your life. Because it, God, God, Bibles, um, God said to me, all the fellowships should wait upon God for. So you have many colleagues. So look how you suffer them. They are becoming things. Something must change in you. Whether physically or spiritually. So there will definitely be a change in their lives. See their body. Boom, 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 everywhere. Look. Stamina. Why? Why will your life go down? We didn't miss devotion one. Ask them. Once. What time do we go out to go and pray? 5 a.m. dot. If I like, let me come back one minute to five. Five dot. They, no, they had it in my hand. One of them said, I regret staying in secretary with you. <laughs> but I'm happy. All of them. One of them was, he controls the boss for RCF. He became their central president. That's the last central president. He was in my room. He was a boss person. He became central president. Take the time to grow. This is why we are having epilepsy in the body of Christ among young men. Epilepsy. Why? No, why? I fathered somebody. No, ask those that met me when they met me. You just gave your life to Christ last year. You have sons and daughters. Sons and daughters. God says, you tell you you're on his behalf, you're ang he's angry with you. Where did it start from? Who, who taught you? Where did you copy it from? Where did you learn it? I told them all through my five years in FUT Mina, ask them. I didn't carry anybody one day to prayer street to pray for. No matter the terribleness of your situation. Come to me and say, it's alright, there's no problem, I'll pray for you. You can go. I didn't carry anybody once. Because I understand the Christian discipline of structure. Structure. It was not my job. I'll pray for you. You carry the gear to prayer street. You didn't know where your hand has touched from the head. Now you anoint everybody. So, so, so. You didn't know. That's how it starts. You were just feeling yourself. You can stand. You know, we assume too much. But when you are faced with a true situation, you'll be shocked what will happen to you. Check some of us when we leave home to show we don't really have a personal work. When we leave school and we we'll go home for the break, your life turns upside down. That's why I get angry with fellowship president. When your member calls you and says, President, I'm missing school, I'm missing school. You say, okay, there's no problem, resume your time. You're a fool. When the highest number of years the person has here is five years, he will stay there more. What were you teaching him all through the semester? That's why you said he went there so I can survive and do testing. IT. You're happy they should come back again and see this where they will remain. I'm just trying to tell you the abuse. 
the abuse going on. That's the rubbish we are seeing. I challenge you. If you see New York man misbehaving, tell him that Papa Stan said we should tell you to grow. Take time to grow. Bring it for me. I will soak Kenisa olive oil and flog him. It's not everything you teach some people, you beat them. See some rubbish thing. Rubbish thing. Why? Do you know you are not permitted under God? I said you are not permitted to minister to anybody, anything. That you give your life to Christ even within the space of three years. You can pray along with somebody, but that you are ministering to the person. You are stupid. How many things have you accumulated that you want to give out? Lift up your hands. Let me just put you. Paraventure, you are here. Your Christian work is up and down. You are falling and rising. I've just told you what is the challenge. You don't have a disciplined prayer and fasting life. You don't have a disciplined prayer and, and life of studying of God's word. Now listen, 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 please. I want to be very sure I'm done with these four disciplines. Listen. I told you, you must learn to wake up what? Early. Please, I beg you that you are in a student environment and you mistakenly wake up late. Don't do devotion and don't go for lectures. You will fail. <laughs> All right? So you don't carry on connected zip from this place now. Then, or you carry your Bible big. And you go to class and you start in front of and put it in front of your lecturer. Uh -uh. That is class, not church. Is that okay? Please. But when you wake up, you find that time is against you. Just bless him and worship him. Let me tell you some of the wisdom I did. I learned um, this great man of God, Dr. Mike Modok. He reads 40 chapters daily. <laughs> I said, no, I don't try 10. <laughs> I gave it to my kids. My, 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 my reading plan. Said, but the, the number of book, Bible um, chapters they read is too much. Say, it's too much daily. <laughs> so I was studying and trying to find out how do this man read 40 chapters daily. Luckily enough, I came up across his secret one. He now said, And hey, you know, for those of you that might not be chanced and busy like us, you just use audio Bible. I said, Ah, I will read 100 chapters. I have time. Now, please, audio Bible helps. Are you hearing me? I said, I want to teach you practical. So I don't leave you. You are thinking, Ah, let me go and try it. You now find that this is not working. Sometimes I do it in the office. I can be busy trying to do something. Else. I just play the audio Bible. And I'm trying to worship God. I'm trying to get my book set, get, and I'll still maintain my devotion. Or I can have it on my phone, or just collect it and play it. Even when the lecturer is not there, just I'm blessed. There's something about the hearing of the word too. It washes you. Please, are you following? So don't go and miss class, or you now stay in your room. I decree the lecturer will not come. That's not it for you. Are an irresponsible child of God. They sent you here to read book. You say lecture should not hold. Why? No, what is it a proof of the anointing? No, sometimes I just see some rubbish we do. I, I, see, there are situations where you know you can't afford it. But somebody should leave if you were God. Somebody left Boso to GK. You are praying that lecture should know you are wicked. Bah. That's the rubbish you are doing. So they've taught us the way to exercise the anointing is to be canceling lectures. Cancel exam and the exam should not be. They should just give you a lift up your hands. So I want to believe I've answered the question in the heart of everyone tonight. So everything is balanced for your fasting life. Now listen, you can start as little as 12. Is that okay? You just make up your mind. Maybe that day you want to break from 12. If you know, maybe it disturbs you or causes you. Just start from there, start from the scratch. Is that okay? And gradually you grow in it. Just make sure there is a consistency. Is that okay? So from 12, you say, okay, I want to start with 12. From there you grow. Don't go and say, ah, I'm so touched tonight. Three days dry. Then the first day you were praying well. When it was in the night, you slept. Day two, you slept and put a war cloth with buzzer. In your front, something to ring. No prayer again, no. Till the third day. You are doing on gas strike. Lift up your hands. Lord, we bless you. We thank you.
we thank you Jesus for tonight Lord release grace upon your people tonight lift up your hands and just pray release grace release grace release grace release grace let's be reminded of all the projects the commitment next week please i beg you come early the worship is something else by five the worship is something else. don't miss it for anything come early i've told those in charge of the bus the bus will leave early please come out early and all your commitments try and fulfill them go on to round up the meeting now i don't want to go into anything else next week we'll complete the session sincerely i tell you something will happen to your life something is happening something is changing in you that thing that has held you bound is broken by just listening to the word tonight a fire has entered into you oh lord no oh glory oh power Give me all oh, on oh glory all power to you sing holy father holy father we worship you, precious Jesus, our Savior, Holy Spirit. We wait on you, Holy Spirit. We wait on you. For fire, 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 lift up your voice and say lord fresh fire in my walk with you upon my altar my prayer altar receive fresh fire tonight my study order receive fresh fire tonight. Shalaga laga balaga skala ya bata shena namane. Elorats kege bele zasa la batu bayate. Para ziko lodo yoko para dash kana na ya gadash. That bit we break tonight. It came because you had no consistency. That's why the devil stepped in. Shaka radia kalamba sopa lantia lege peregesh Shiala de brahma skota la vieta Arote le de skala ya da gabara skela de yato Ero seye kalabara di skala ya da belege de ijonos Prede de de yaga belege lege skala la da bas Come Shalagalaga balaga yaga balaga da yaga dash Come Shiyalane abake salamani yaga bosh Rada da mega belaga de yaga balaga da bas Kabe lentu belaha Ila roa sele yaga dobri yaga dobe lege dush Shilaman do balaya fiya Kola da sube lagi yaga dobe lege balash Ila le de yaga dola do balash Kale na bi Rada da da na imbas kuba la ya tuwe bele gina shala ya ando basha raka da ba da da ba ka ta ba ka ta ba la ka ta me kara da ba los ka pe kura de skabria in jesus name see i don't know how to encourage you tonight but you know when i look at the young people of our generation 
and I wonder some of you will be fathers tomorrow some of you will be mothers and you don't have this discipline what will your children learn from you what will your children learn what will you live to teach them what will they copy from your life will they say you are a praying mother now you will struggle to form that bit later in life what will they learn One time, one of my daughters asked me, sir, that's the last question I'm going to answer tonight. I told you today is an advice service. It's no rema, no revelation. We finished 24 elders. We are confused, so let's calm down. <laughs> she asked me, she said, sir, what's the secret to your consistency? Everybody listen. I want to say something very, very vital. What's the secret to your consistency with God? Why is it that after 13 years you still love God like this? No, check now. You find that your love has gone down. The things of the spirit is a burden to you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't mean. And with all these things I've told you, I've gone through in life. Why is it that you still love God like this? Listen. The secret of my consistency is this. And I say it under God. I have fallen many times, but I refuse to stay there. Anytime I fall, I say, God, God, oh God. I look back. I don't want to follow the devil. Father, please help me. I still want to follow you. That's how we have been coming for 13 years. Young lady, young boy, I have fallen many times. I have made terrible mistakes in life. Things I might be ashamed to tell you. But my consistency is that I refuse to what? Stay there. I keep holding. I'll forever be chasing after you. That's a song. How we change the Listen, listen. Were there habits I have struggled with? Yes. That's why I'm talking from an experience. I have had habits I have struggled with. I prayed and fasted. After finishing the fast, I went back to it. <laughs> I have been dead. But I held on to God. Till He seized my commitment and my heart. And He raised me up to where I am right now. You know, sometimes we tell so much lies to young believers. We tell them the thing will just be fire, 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 fire. It's not true. When I gave my life to Christ, one week, Hapa, I was pouring for God. After seven days, the thing was not interesting to me again. No. I just found that guy. I see the thing naturally was going down. But I held on. So we don't tell young believers this truth. When they get to this face and they find that, ah. They say, since there's a particular people that will pursue God, not me, they go back again. So I'm telling you the truth. I have what? Fallen many times, not once. But I pick it up and say, Lord, I'll keep chasing. Oh, I will run forever. I will run unto you, oh God. Where else can I go? Oh, I will, I will run Forever I will run Unto you, oh God Now you have my heart Forever I will run there are about five people here listen god said to me i should tell you to calm down the way you are going is not the secret to greatness go and sit down and learn sit down lock up that revelation you have put it tight down and sit down and grow sit down sit down maintain find make sure your life you have a consistent prayer life consistent study life consistent life of purity then you can begin to double into other things. Lift up your hands. Let me speak into your lives. What I say under God, God confirms tonight. Upon your altars, lift up your hands. I decree a fresh release of God's fire. Amen. That's your zeal that has gone down your love for God that has died down 
Now listen, I hear God say to me, some of you, it was the church that betrayed you. You were struggling, trying to know God, and you make, made some little, little mistakes here and there. And they spoke against you. They talked so many things, and you got discouraged. I am seeing some of you here. God said, I should, pick, I should speak to you. They are not qualified enough to have kept you in that state. Make up your mind again with God tonight. I beg you. Tonight is a restoration service. Make up. You will see naturally some of you, demonic case will break by themselves. They will begin to run by themselves because your environment will become too hot. There's a way you can walk, they will feel the flavor of Christianity around you. Lift up your hands. Lord, I speak into the lives of your people. Let your altar receive fresh fire tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your prayer life receive fresh fire tonight. Amen. Let your fasting life receive fresh fire tonight. Amen. Let your study life receive fresh fire tonight. Amen. Let your life of purity receive fresh fire tonight. Amen. Shikamanda zele belegedesh kalabash. Kolobasa beledi kalaman subela tiada belegedesh kalabash. Razegele basubala dayada belegedesh. La baziza ya tuale gede 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 I break the effect of controlling powers holding anyone bound here it is broken now Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. that thing that causes you to make decisions over and over again to stop a thing or to come up with something you still could not live to it I break it now in the name of Jesus Amen. that yoke of impurity is broken now the yoke of masturbation is broken now. Amen. I break it now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, Whatever has not been planted by my Father shall be uprooted. I declare and declare under God, Whatever has not been planted by God in your life, right now, I declare, Let it be uprooted. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That struggle ends tonight. Amen. That habits break tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Shigalaparos Konemelegedesh Kalabash. But eventually you are here. Your destiny has been short changed. I enter right now with the angel of judgment into the realm of the spirit. I decree your destiny restored back now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Ghost. Some of you will begin to feel fire upon your hands, on your feet, on your body. God is releasing fresh fire now, 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 now. Now, now, you are living here with a fresh zeal. You are living here with an unswerving devotion. Shalega belege soya na malagadash. Ela suya la beke dome ne zubi atale de shale akadash. Panen zosa kalami e toba la dash kaninesh. Ela soya la galagadash kala ya da balagadish. Shaya la mando siya la galagabieta. Iyo la bei zote lando biya kaname yansoba Elia zo ela gomina ndoba yesh Shala dao shaka la mande ati But adventure is an ungodly relationship you are in That is sucking your work with God I break that relationship now Amen In the name of Jesus Amen
but adventure is a family limitation that is pulling you away from God so that that limitation can have an effect in your life right now under the sound of my voice every limitation breaks now amen in the name of Jesus amen for your sake your family is declared free amen. in the name of Jesus amen. that long standing problem ends tonight amen. in the name of Jesus amen. that shame is removed now amen. that reproach is removed now amen. in the name of Jesus amen. hear me but adventure is for any of your sibling that you are trusting God for you say God touch this one touch this one you are told maybe it's even your dad or your mom lift up your hands there is a grace that is heavy right now there's an oil in the house now lord i pray for your people that person they are holding at heart see mark my word mark my word next week friday you will testify on this altar mark my word i speak under the government of heaven I speak by the influence of the government of God. I release salvation to your home now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I release salvation to that sister of yours, Amen. to that brother of yours, Amen. to that of your that, that your parents of yours. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That stronghold is broken now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I decree, decree your parents saved. Amen. May they have an encounter with Jesus. Amen. I pray for your dad, for your mom, for your siblings. I decree that one that is struggling to know God. May Jesus encounter him tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We can't be saved and allow our family members go to hell. Lift up your hands. I'm feeling so pressed to pray that prayer. Shiga balado shala la bigedesh. Le bege zoma na tuwa velege do sopo lodo shkala biya. Ele de don soko lo bitande bele. Morwaze e kondo biya la da shkela ya da bila ye. Li pan shele e geto shala la na miya na na shkala da. I release salvation to every member of your family that is not saved. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I ask in your infinite mercy, oh God, that you encounter their families tonight. Amen. You encounter their fathers tonight. Amen. Their mothers tonight. Amen. Their siblings tonight. Amen. That uncle, that cousin. Jesus encounters them tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We break satanic yokes holding them bound. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And finally tonight I pray. Soka la batu bele des kama na yaga bela hashtag. Bere des kala yana maligedosh. For some of you, your grades. I'm praying for your academics. Finally, I promised us I'll do this under God in every meeting. Your grades, your CGPA is nothing to write home about. I invoke the supernatural hand of God supernatural in a way i cannot explain amen let your cgpa increase amen by the agency of the workings of the power of god amen in the name of jesus amen. some of you you saw your last semester results they were f's i stand right now under god i decree those s change to a's amen in the name of jesus amen Shala boka to belegas kama ya dagalagadas Pere de sala ya gabelegades Shala na ba ya gadas Some of you for adventure you just need a little point to enter into a two one By grace by the supernatural workings of God I decree and declare I push you by grace Amen In the name of Jesus Amen I hear my voice You are in this meeting tonight you are in your final year first semester you had an f write it if i be called of god you will graduate with your mates amen 
for your sake i decree let them take a decision that will turn to your favor amen in the name of jesus amen but eventually you are here you have a dear friend that you are desperate for you want the person to really grab. i'm seeing the hunger i'm praying by the leadings of god now hear my voice two things will happen it's either the grace are changed supernaturally to f or they take a decision that must favor that person to graduate in the name of jesus amen some of you will go back now to your results i challenge you you will see that f has changed amen you will see that e has changed amen you will see that d has changed amen that C has changed Amen. to A's Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. You under the sound of my voice, a demon of sickness has held you bound. I curse it now. Amen. That disease dies now. Amen. That infirmity leaves you now. Amen. I decree you heal. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I extend this healing ability to your families anyone tied down is declared healed now amen in the name of jesus amen. god enter into your home touch your parents touch your siblings that yoke is broken now amen in the name of jesus amen ulcer dies amen. arthritis dies amen. back pain dies amen asthma dies amen paralysis dies amen blood is healed amen ss is changed to a amen Yes, it's changed to A. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Diabetes is healed. Amen. IBP, I command, come down. Amen. Come down. Amen. Come down. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. There's somebody, I see one of your parents. An angel with that person now. Just bring down the blood pressure. Tell the person, go back, do a test. Please make sure you testify next meeting. Do a test. I see the blood pressure just come down. That's what God can do. You came here tonight with any form of sickness. You are declared healed. Amen. I pray for you. God will release upon you super intelligence. Amen. But adventure, you are here under the sound of my voice. Put your hands on your head, everybody. You struggle to understand. That demon is cursed. I decree God will release upon you super intelligence. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Quick understanding. Amen. Quick understanding. Amen. Retentive memory. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sala Gabela Samana Namishkaleata. I cost that demon sponsoring blank brain. I cost that demon sponsoring forgetfulness. That demon is cursed now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Said he has made me ten times better than my teachers. Shoka baladis komani anamalage doshkani atapi. Some of you will operate in a realm of super intelligence. Sigalo betola ya. Paris said don't do I see angels moving, putting their hands as I was speaking, putting their hands on people. God said that's the spirit of wisdom I'm releasing super intelligence super intelligence super intelligence some of you will come up with witty inventions witty inventions you go with flood your ideas will hit you you'll be flooded with light you'll be flooded with light you'll be flooded like you have never experienced before super intelligence you will come up with inventions 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 ideas ideas creative ideas Say la gabella gadaya gabale gadosh. You are here, maybe you are disturbed by this continuous headache. I cause it now. Amen. I decree you heal. Amen. That yoke is broken. Amen. Beat my grain. I cause that demon now. Amen. I decree you heal. In the name of Jesus. Amen. But adventure, you are here tormented in any with, for, in form of demonic affliction. Maybe in your dream, you are tormented. See, mark my word that you stayed under this atmosphere tonight. Tonight, go and sleep well. 
I tell you, you will never experience that demon again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. That stupid dream ends tonight. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. For every family represented here, I don't care how the economic situation is. I have told God I refuse to participate in it. I don't care. The problem in the world is not because of me. The problem on the earth right now is not because of your family. The same water that was destroying the world was the same water lifting up the ark of Noah. The same angel that was darkness to the camp of Egypt was the same angel that was light to the children of, of Israel. The same Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot's wife could not look at and turn to a pillar of salt. That same Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham looked with his physical eyes. The problem in the world is not because of you. The problem on this earth is not because of your family. Refuse to participate. This economic meltdown and recession is not here because of you. Refuse to participate. Lift up your hands, everybody. I pray for every family represented here. Mark my words. I hear God say this to me. 72 hours. Let a financial miracle hit your home. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Within 72 hours, if I be called of God, oil of my life, God of my call, let every family represented here receive a financial miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Even right here, right now, I pray for miracle alerts to enter your home. Let God compare people to remember you. Amen. This week, mark my word. This week, may you enjoy strange financial favor like you have never enjoyed in your life. Amen. Those you don't expect money to come from, God put them under pressure to remember you. Amen. Enjoy strange financial favor. Amen. See, for everyone that came for this ministry tonight, I refuse you to encounter any financial struggle this week. Amen. Enjoy strange financial favor. Amen. You are not permitted to be stranded this week. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are not permitted to beg this week. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, I pray for you. Wherever your mates will get to in life, may you not find a difficulty entering there. Amen. You will never become an object of pity and sympathy in this life. Amen. God makes you the envy of the world. Amen. See, for those in final here, I prophesy and declare, and declare this same grace I have enjoyed, this same oil I have enjoyed. I decree life after school be sweet for you. Amen. None of you under the sound of my voice. None of you under the sound of my voice is permitted to experience pain after school. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. None of you, none of you, none of you We ever cry, hear my voice You will never cry for a job Amen. In the name of Jesus Amen. Just lift up your hands and worship Him Who have this oil? I was looking for an oil I saw in the vision, I was praying for an oil That's when I saw him picked it I said, give me, I was looking for it Thank you I know I didn't bring an oil to the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, we give you praise. As your people go, let your presence go with them. Amen. See, may men take note in your life that you have been with God tonight. Amen. The Bible says, and they took notice of them that they have been with Christ. See, some of you watch. The kind of presence you are living with, you didn't fall, doesn't matter. There is a kind of fire you you contacted from this meeting watch it you will enter into your hostel your friends your colleague will just be looking at you strangely something around you an atmosphere around you may the atmosphere of this meeting tonight go with you Amen. may the angels released for this meeting tonight follow you to your destination in the name of jesus Amen. and may every grace is released tonight in this meeting be mounted upon your life. Amen. 
all of you come back next week with a testimony Amen. come back next week with a testimony Amen. may god give you a mind-blowing miracle Amen. may god give you a mind-blowing miracle Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. i decree next week testimony galore in the name of Jesus. Amen. May one testimony hit you after another. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Just worship him. Receive everything God has said over your life. Worship him. Say, Lord, this is for me. Tonight was for me. I received them. Tonight, tonight was for me. Jesus. We love you. I'm so happy to have you around. We love you. So happy to have you around. Please come. The young man over there will meet with you. The meeting is declared close. God's grace shine on you. Please make sure you shake everybody and just tell them God's grace continually shine on you.